everybody. Welcome to Wednesday Night Worship. We are grateful that you have chosen to be here with us through the blessings of the intranets. And um, we pray that this night of worship um, is good for your soul and good for your spirit and helps you to connect deeper to our creator, to our redeemer, to our guide and our comforter. And we know that he is good, and we know that you are good because he created you. And so we lift all of that up in Jesus' name. Let's worship him tonight. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise just to know thus saith the Lord
Hey friends, I brought another tacky book. This one is called Tacky and the Emperor. Remember, Tacky is a penguin. As the sun set on the iceberg, goodly, lovely, angel, neatly, perfect, and tacky were telling penguin jokes. Why did the penguin cross the road? asked Goodly. Why? asked his companions. He didn't. Lovely angel neatly and perfect laughed uproariously. They couldn't figure out what was funny, but they knew that it was polite to laugh at the end of a joke, and this seemed to be the end of the joke. I don't get it, said Tacky. How many penguins does it take to change a light bulb? asked Lovely. Before anyone could answer, a messenger swooped down and dropped a note. The note read, the emperor is coming to visit, like tomorrow. This news put goodly, lovely, angel, neatly, and perfect into a flap. The emperor, their leader, they must, must, must get ready to welcome him properly. So all through the night, they twitted about. Goodly, lovely, angel made piles of fish-flavored cupcakes mounds of fish-flavored ice cream, and gallons of fish-flavored punch. Neatly decorated a throne with ribbons and sparkly stars. Perfect practiced a perfect dance for the emperor's entertainment. Tacky was in charge of balloons. As the sun rose, he blew up the last one. I'll make this one the biggest one of all, he thought. So he huffed. And he puffed, and he rose, and the next thing he knew, clink. He had crashed at the foot of a very large block of ice. <laughs> Unknown to Tacky, this impressive block of ice was the emperor's palace. The emperor had been in an especially grumpy mood, for it was hard work being an emperor. Visits, 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 he grumbled. What a bore. Dressing up in that uncomfortable visiting costume day in and day out. I suppose they'll have the same fish-flavored food and silly decorations and dull entertainment. And then he thought, perhaps a little swim will refresh me. So he shed his boss hat and his royal bathrobe and his curly twinkle toe shoes and waded into the royal swimming pool. Ooh, looky here, exclaimed Tacky when he noticed a dazzling pile of clothes. Someone has thrown out a snazzy costume. Chuckling with excitement, he put on the boss hat and the royal bathrobe and the curly twinkle toe shoes. Ta-da, he chirped. Am I ready to meet the emperor or what? And with that, he wobbled home. As Tacky approached goodly, lovely, angel, neatly, and perfect in his nifty outfit, they whispered, shh, here he comes, here he comes. And they fell to their bellies being unable to fall to their knees because penguins don't have knees. <laughs> oh, your highness, welcome to our humble burg. Welcome, welcome. Well, thought Tacky, what a greeting. He couldn't remember being received by his companions with such a fuss. Oh, your highness, they cried, please honor us by sitting on the ribbony sparkly throne. Well, thanks, said Tacky. Don't mind if I do. He wrapped several decorative ribbons around his middle, popped some balloons with his beak, and played frisbee with the sparkly stars. His companions' beaks dropped open at this surprising behavior, but of course they said nothing. After all, this was the emperor. Then they encouraged him. Please, please, your highness, enjoy some delicious fish-flavored refreshments. Don't mind if I do, said Tacky, as he dived in and enjoyed everything, right down to the last slurp. Goodly looked at Lovely, 
Who looked at Angel? Who looked at Neatly? Who looked at Perfect? Who looked at the empty bowls, plates, and pitchers? My, this was a hungry fellow. Rounder than they had expected, too, and certainly rounder than he'd been minutes before. Ah, but this was the emperor. And according to their careful schedule, it was entertainment time. Please, 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 your highness, sit back, relax, and enjoy the perfect dance Perfect will perform for you. Don't mind if I do, said Tacky. Funny, Perfect had never danced before. Wasn't this fun? Perfect was taking a flying leap to begin the dance when... Rudy toot toot, wumpa wumpa wumpa. The emperor appeared. Oops. The five companions looked at the emperor, then across to Tacky, then back to the emperor, and then back to Tacky, and then they saw it. Teeny, tiny, and definitely Hawaiian. A bit of Tacky's shirt poked out of his robe. Goodly gasped. Lovely twitched. Angel gulped. Neatly smothered an eek, and Perfect fainted. This was not the emperor, and now they realized what was happening, or had happened. What's happening, greeted Tacky, who'd been having such fun he only now remembered that the emperor was coming. When the emperor said nothing except, nice outfit, Tacky thought, hmm, the emperor has no clothes, but this must be the big fella. Yep, let's see. No decorations. Nope. No food. Nope. Showtime's over. Yep, I guess I'm on. (laughs) Tacky quickly made a snowball cone and offered it to the emperor. Mmm, said the emperor. No fish. Tacky then gathered a few unpopped balloons and made a lovely decorative hat. Very comfortable, said the emperor. And for a grand finale, Tacky did a hoppity floppity dance and sang his favorite song. How many toes does a fish have? I wonder, yep, I wonder. And how many wings on a cow? Wow, I wonder, yep, I wonder. The emperor broke into a belly laugh, clapped his flippers and rolled on the ground. This was the funniest entertainment he'd seen in years. And he didn't have to admire boring decorations eat fish-flavored food, or wear his uncomfortable visiting costume. He stayed for the whole day, sharing snowball cones and silly penguin jokes. Why, late in the day, the emperor even tried one. How many penguins does it take to change a light bulb? He asked. How many, how many, begged the penguins. To get to the other side, howled the emperor, and everybody had a huge laugh. I don't get it, said Tacky. As the sun set, the emperor thanked the penguins for an outstanding day and told Tacky to keep the nifty costume. You're a prince among penguins, he said. And as the emperor waddled away, goodly, lovely, angel, neatly, and perfect, hugged Prince Tacky. Tacky was an odd bird, but a nice bird to have around. I like that story. It reminds me in a way of what the Bible tells us of how to treat other people. You know, we don't have to put on airs trying to impress people or trying to make them think that we're better than we are. We're just supposed to treat them with kindness. It's just like the fruit of the Spirit. We're supposed to be, teach, um, excuse me, (coughs) sorry, I swallowed wrong. But kindness is one of the one of the amazing fruits of the spirit. And in Galatians it says, and here's the whole fruit of the spirit. The Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And while Taki may not have had much self-control, he definitely had a lot of the other stuff. And there's a verse in Colossians, in Colossians 3, it says, You must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. 
And Taki really did show us that. He showed us that he wasn't going to put on airs for the emperor. He was just going to help him have fun. And I think that's a good lesson for all of us, that we can just help other people by thinking about what makes them feel better and then doing it. Give them a smile, give them a hug, make a card for them, give them something that you know that they love and help them have a great day, just like Tacky did for the emperor. Have a great day, you all, and I'll sort of see ya on Sunday. Bye. <laughs>
I can talk to, talk with God because I have access to the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ, says Ephesians. And not only that, the Spirit intercedes for me when I don't have the words. And then sometimes I sense, I feel God speak to me. And I can do this because God reached down and saved a broken, lost 18-year-old and gave me the gift of faith. Then Susan brought me my morning vitamins. I'm grateful for her care for me. And grateful that some scientists figured out how to put vitamins into little pills and were able to buy them cheaply and enhance our health. Then, time for breakfast, a bowl of cereal and blueberries. I got a big bag of frozen blueberries from BJ's. They're cheap and delicious. Someone grew and harvested and packaged them, and I'm able to have blueberries on hand anytime I want them all year long. I have some cereal with milk and a dairy farmer who's raising cows, milk cows, God's creature, Creatures who provide nourishment for us. The farmer gets up crazy early and gets milk out of the cows and a big silver milk truck pulled up and came and got the milk and then it was pasteurized at a plant that someone invested millions of dollars to build and then people there who work there to run it and then it's packaged and I can go to the store and buy it anytime I want. So after breakfast, I did a little work on a computer connected to, to this internet thing you may have heard of. I have this magic machine that can do calculations in one second that would take a year for a team of math geniuses to do. And this computer through the internet is, co is connected to the sum total of human knowledge. I remember years ago watching Star Trek and how they boasted how the computers on the Enterprise had in their memory banks the sum total of human knowledge and that seemed impossibly far off and yet I have that at my fingertips. I can use this machine to send instantaneous messages to people all over the world. I can write documents, easily modify and delete stuff. No more typewriter and whiteout. Then, I went for a long bike ride with a friend, a, a companion who would ride with me. We could talk and be there in case one of us got a flash, got a, fl got a, a flat tire or into a crash. I've got this bike made of carbon fiber. It's light and strong. This, this, this material that some scientists invented and others figured out how to make things out of it. The bike also has gears made of metal that someone dug that metal out of the ground and then turned the ore into workable metal. And then some other people made it into the gears. And I was able to buy that bike last year for my 60th birthday. It wasn't cheap, but Susan pushed me. She told me I was worth it. So before I went out, listen to this. I put on sunscreen. This substance that someone invented and that man, it's manufactured and I can buy it and put it on myself and prevent getting scorched by the sun, except I forgot to put it on my nose. <laughs> so we ride up to Orrstown, then Roxbury, then Newburgh, and over the beautiful old covered bridge there. It's a clear day. You can see the mountains. There are cows and goats. Cars give us a wide berth. A friendly golden retriever runs alongside us with a toy in its mouth. Saw some beautiful houses, some converted from old barns. People waved at us. Saw wheat waving in the breeze. We rode 40 miles. I'm almost 61, but God has given me a body and good health and strong legs, and I can, I can exercise, and my bike computer said I burned over 3,000 calories on that ride. So I come home, and I had my restorative glass of chocolate milk, more milk, then this chocolate syrup that started out as cacao pods. Well, if you've been on the Hershey tour, you know the whole process of how those pods are turned into chocolate. Then I took a shower. I go into this amazing room that has running water that is pumped into my house from Long Pine Reservoir. Nice, clean water. And I stand in the shower stall and it has this magic lever where I can turn it and precisely adjust the temperature of the water so it was at that perfect spot right between cool and warm. I squirted some goo into my hand and was able to wash my hair. I'm grateful I'm 60, I still have hair. 
a lot of hair. I clean up. I towel off. I get dressed. I have clothes. Too many clothes. I got to get rid of some clothes. I put on my now sandals that I got at 50% off at ELM Shoes down in Greencastle. They have this amazing sale closet for the men's shoes. So I do that and I went back to work. I had a Zoom meeting. I can talk to people dispersed all over through my computer. And even though we're distanced because of the virus, we can still meet and talk and support one another. Then it's time for dinner. For dinner, I didn't have to go out and go hunting and kill and skin, kill and skin and clean and butcher a deer or go out and gather nuts and berries. I went to this magic box we have in our house that keeps food frozen. And I pulled out some soup and some homemade bread and heated them up and then got some cheese. And you can think all about all that went into getting that food to me. Susan and I sat outside on our patio as the day was cooling down and we got to talk with one another. Again, I have a companion in life that I can share life with. Then I had a session meeting by Zoom and we worked through some challenging stuff like the guidelines for how we're going to operate during the yellow phase beginning Friday, but we got it figured out. God was there. God was guiding us. We were working on this and we missed something and then, then one of our elders, Valerie, brought us back to it and we got it right. I'm grateful that I get to do ministry with these friends. We don't always agree, but we're sisters and brothers in Christ. Which leads me to gratitude that I'm your pastor. I get to share life with you. I love you guys. I love Central. And I get to make my living by, by serving you, by studying and preaching and teaching the word and helping people grow in faith and working to help this community become more like God intends. Then after that, I got to relax. I had a piece of this amazing blueberry pie that friends in the church brought me. It was just an act of kindness, an act of random kindness to thank me for being their pastor. And I think the woman who made this, she must have worked for hours. She made the crust from scratch and baked it, and they brought it right to my house. And there I was in the evening sitting on the couch with Susan with a great piece of pie, watching a dumb comedy on TV and, and laughing. TV, Netflix, Hulu, thousands of movies, TV shows, anytime I want to watch them, click, 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 and they're there. Then I went to bed, turned on the air conditioning because it was hot in the second floor of our house, we got another magic kind of machine that cools the air. It runs on this stuff called electricity that someone figured out how to generate, and then they run it through big wires over many miles right into my house. I lay down on a nice mattress with comfy pillows that Susan got a couple of weeks ago, and Susan snuggled next to me, and I fell asleep. Now, that was just an ordinary, typical day. And let me tell you, it was a tough day in some ways, too. We've got some real challenges, some heartache in our family right now. But in the midst of all that, gratitude, gratitude is always possible. So why are we commanded to do this over and over again to practice gratitude? Well, one reason is so that we see and appreciate the good that is woven into our daily lives all the time. I read somewhere that human beings have a built-in negativity bias. We are three times more prone to see the bad than to see the good. That tells you that we have a natural inclination to overlook the good, so we need to practice the discipline of looking for it and appreciating it. Second reason, God knows it's good for us. One. Uh, scientist whose first name is Morali and his last name to me is unpronounceable said this, if thankfulness were a drug, it would be the world's best-selling product with a health maintenance indicator for every major organ system. Studies have shown that it has measurable effects on multiple body and brain systems. Mood translate, mood tra neurotransmit, <laughs> mood neurotransmitters, Re reproductive hormones, social bonding hormones, 
cognitive and pleasure-related neurotransmitters. It has a positive effect on your inflammatory and immune systems. It reduces stress hormones. It calms your cardiac and EEG rhythms, lowers your blood pressure and blood sugar. Not only makes us healthier, it can make us better. Sometimes, maybe this happens to you, I get grumpy. When I am grumpy, I am no fun to be around. I get irritable, I get morose, I get self-focused. But when I'm grateful, I'm a much nicer, much more enjoyable person. We really do have a choice between being grumpy or grateful. And being grateful can change our moods and move us out of despair. And you may have noticed that the world wants us to be angry and to feel deprived and cheated. And sometimes there are reasons to be angry and people are being cheated and we should be moved to act against injustice. But we're always called as followers of the Lord Jesus to do that out of a, out of a foundation of trust and gratitude. And finally, God commands gratitude because it orients us towards the God who wishes good for us. I read a story years ago by Elizabeth Ochtemeyer who was talking to a dear friend of hers and they were out for a beautiful walk on a beautiful day, maybe something like today. Her friend was an unbeliever, a committed atheist. And as they were walking along and seeing all the beauty of creation, her friend just burst out and said, oh, I'm so grateful. And Ochtemeyer said to her, grateful to whom, my dear? Gratitude is supposed to drive us to know and love God. It's really a form of worship. And worship is not about God being desperate for our praise and affirmation. It's how we learn to delight in God and grow in thankfulness for who God is and God's gift for us. Gratitude is to help us know that as the praise song goes, you're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. Gratitude reinforces that in us. As the old hymn goes, God does have no harshness hast thou and no bitterness. God is not a God who's uncaring, distant, angry. God is a good God who blesses us in ways seen and unseen a thousand times a day. So what I'm saying is gratitude is a path to knowing and loving God and it is essential to that. That's why it's commanded. That's why it's good for us. That's why we ought to pay attention to the beauty and texture of everyday life. Wendell, Bell, Wendell Berry wrote a novel called Hannah Coulter, and it, it talks about the life of a simple but wise Kentucky farm mother. Farm mother. She and her husband Nathan talk about what it's going to be like when the children grow up and move away. And the, Hannah says, the chance you had in life is the chance you've got. You can make complaints about what people, including you, make of their lives after they've got them and about what other people make of their lives. You can complain about your children being gone, but you mustn't wish for another life. You mustn't want to be someone else. What you must do is this. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing in everything give thanks. And she says, I am not all the way capable of so much, but those are the right instructions. And so they are. And I commend them to you and I wish you God's blessing on this good evening. Grace and peace.